plain sight. We have a post up above this that shows you all of our colors that we have available for those of you interested in doing the finish, like the picture that is on the right, pardon me, the mixed media. My name's Sam and I'm playing behind the scenes today. Jody is doing the final touches, getting ready so we can go over this. While she's doing that, I'm going to take you over here and show you a couple things that we have coming up. Right here we have our ear wraps coming up. Hopefully you guys can see that. Ooh. Coming up that she'll be teaching next Thursday. And you'll be able to make whatever sizes you need, which is very helpful when you're doing those pieces for other people. I'm going to get back in place so I can Teacher move it said the over. size of wire you need to use, types of wire, tools to do it with, how to finish them, how to work hard in them, all of those things. So as you have questions, put them in the comments. If any of you started pieces and you want to share them or even finished pieces, please pop those up in the comment as well. A reminder that Joni does have her solder class online for sale, and we will get information up on our site today about that. The first 20 people that purchase her soldering class will get a entry into a drawing for a giveaway. The giveaway includes several pieces, including the uh, solder rail. Solder rail, I went brain dead for a second that uh, Joni has developed to help you do the soldering. It's got the polishing, it's got a Salamoniac block, a bunch of glass, it's $80 value, and the class is only $75. Plus in the class you also get PDF printouts with all the instructions if you want to print them out, and also a bunch, a bunch of pages of printouts to do alphabets and images and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, are we ready to do this? We are ready. Okay, guys, this is uh, one that I just did a little repair on this week, and so I added the little straws back in, and there was something else, let's see, what doesn't have color on it, maybe that's about it. So this is the remainder of my jar, and I'm, you know, always a firm believer in use up all your products, so I've got a little bit left in there, so I just cut the top off. So I'm adding another coat of gesso on here. Um, I had mentioned before that if things don't cover correctly, they have bleed through of pink or blue or green because sometimes your metals react differently or um, dye on like black chipboard might turn pink on you that you need to put spray paint on this. And I did spray a few things on this one because some of my beads had green in them right here. And so I hit it with a little bit of spray paint. But if you just do spray paint, it's not going to be an absorbent ground like gesso is. So it's not going to, the sprays aren't going to sink into it. They're just going to run off. So I will re-gesso this. So I've, I'll touch those up. And I can't remember, I think just on here, I think a few little bits, they had, they had cracked. Is it here? I'll just hit it's this right again. Where the straw bends in the center. Okay. Yeah, I see it there. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of gesso work because I want to change some of the color on this anyway so I can show you how the um, sprays work really well into this. So I'll just do a little bit of touch up here so we can get some more sprays put on here. This was uh, Sherry Kiefer's work that she had done. So sorry Sherry, hopefully um, you don't mind me taking creative license with your work and changing it up just a little bit so I can use it as a demonstration. Sherry's an art teacher in Hawaii and does fabulous work, so I think she'll allow me. Plus, she's my cousin, so she has to be my friend. Okay, so we just did that. We got those touched up. Now, let's go back over this. But I wanted to show you, and I'm with the gesso, but I wanted to show you what I had done to this because am I still on screen, Sam? I want to get a little closer. Okay, so I wanted to show you what I added to this. And if you watch that, um, those did you, are both of those videos up to uh, show how I did this? Both of them? Yes. That okay. Would be no. Okay, so there are, will be up soon. there are two videos that show 
how I did the gesso work and things on this, but I'm going to show you some more anyway. I wanted to show you here. Last week we had, what did we have up here? And I took it off. We had the we had squirrels. We had the squirrels, and there was something else up here, and I didn't like it, so I took it off. Because when you do this hidden work versus just a collage work, and in a collage work, you really do want some void spaces, some negative spaces, but in a hidden in plain sight, it's kind of like, where's Waldo? You have to hunt out the area, so I really wanted it to be full. So this has a piece of corrugated, this is just cardstock that I just did a fan fold and put it down in here, and I tucked it underneath that spiral. I have some seashells because I thought I wanted to bring in some of the, the nautical end of this too because it was just kind of taking me that direction with the shells. So here are some, uh, some shells I made to be like wings and they have shells up here. I just grabbed these paper clips and put them in. This is a, um, these are chess pieces because I thought the knight, the horse looked like um, a seahorse. So I put him in, so I added a couple pieces here. And these were plastic. And to make these lay flat in there, I took them over to an electric sander, and I, I ground the backs off of them so they would lay in here nice and flat. And that video is up there, but I'm going to group them in a post okay. when we get done. Okay, so you'll, you can go back and watch that. And then these are all just a bunch of beads. These are the metal beads that we used in the enameling class a couple weeks ago that have holes in them. So I just put a bunch in there. There's a light bulb. Just a cup of, there's a little bit of a flower to give it some texture. This is a frozen Charlotte, and she has a bead cap on top to be a crown. Some buttons. Uh, these are the feathers. And be sure when you gesso the feathers, I actually lifted these out, and I painted them, and then I pulled them apart so you could see the, the sections of the feather. And I mentioned this in the video that if you just did this with spray paint and you didn't do this with gesso, you couldn't shape those. The spray paint would just let, make it all go flat and stick together. And I want to be able to raise leaves and petals and, and shape them. So like this one, see I can even pull this up further right now. I can pull that little petal up. And you want to be sure and get the undersides of all of those. So I kept them mentioned by being able to uh, add the gesso and be able to shape them a little bit. Do you, add, do you use glue too? Are you I used glue to put all the elements down to begin with. I used a combination, and this is in last week, so you can go back and see. I used hot glue in a combination with something else like a, a either a weld bond um, or the Gorilla Tube glue. So the, the hot glue holds it fast and instant, but unless it's very fibrous, like uh, these, like the, you know, the grasses and things like that, the hot glue does, will, uh, with, moving this around, changing temperature, things like that, that hot glue can pop apart. So I use the hot glue to hold it in place while I you know, need it to be there, but I have another glue in there that's a long holding glue to take, um, to take care of that. So if and that answers your question. You did to the back too. Oh, that was another piece. I well, did I, did stick, I did stick the uh, buttons through like this, and they were tight enough that I didn't, I could have run a wire down those, um, you know, where is that piece? I don't know, but why don't you continue explaining and I will look for it. I don't know where we put the one with the, there is another piece that has clock, that has uh, the steampunk Here's. one. Here we go. Oh, okay. Was our close? There you go. Okay, so I decided on this one, we had talked last week about adding elements and not gessoing them. So this one had been damaged because I had hauled this, this one around for probably 15 years and so much had gotten knocked out. So I just added actual gears on top. It's all steampunk behind. I do have a big uh, gear that I'm getting ready to do a solder stamping on. This is a solder stamp gear too, but I've got a real big one that's gonna fit on top of these right here. And that's what uh, Sam was talking about. Behind, I just stacked bits of foam board to let those uh, long you know, wires on the back come through. And I think these are gonna stay put, but I may wire down in this to make this one hold there. But, um, so that's that one. But I'm gonna let these all be their natural state like that. I'm not gonna put any more gesso on those. So let me go ahead and add some gesso to this because it's got spray paint on it now. And I, I don't really wanna put the sprays on here. I had another plan for it, but I want to show you the sprays, so we may do some of it. 
here. So I'm just taking and I can see where it's kind of shiny. So I'm just taking the matte. The gesso is very matte. So I'm taking it and putting it on so the sprays or whatever will hold. What I was going to do was put watercolor on this with a brush and just highlight the bird and some specific elements. But maybe we'll just do it with the spray. And instead of just letting the spray run, we'll actually highlight certain spots. So say you get under that, because you want that to lift up. You probably can't see what's glossy and what's matte on here, but I can from my view. And this up on top is just a piece of uh, Battenberg lace. It almost to me looks like netting, like fish netting because of the texture and the strings involved. Okay, so I think I have all of that up there done. But I have to get, if I'm gonna spray, I have to get it all the surfaces covered or they won't take the same way. So let's come down here. Does it all look kind of hidden to you now? Unless you're up close to it, I think things just kind of look like, wait, what, what is that? Where is that element? When you put the spray on it, even though it's a random spraying, I think it kind of brings the pieces out a little bit so you can identify them. But when if you leave it all white, I think it makes it even more of a mystery. Hey, Sam, that one that's all white, I think is hanging in the hallway right outside the door. I don't know, did we ever show that? Okay. Well, we could just show them how all white looks versus the, the spray that I'm gonna use. So you could just hold it off to the side. Okay. Well, we do need to show it because we, what Sam did, we and we had questions about this last week, about leaving it um, like painted color instead of having just the random. So she did a really neat uh, Frida one. So bring that in and show that. I'm going to step this back and so I can get close to it and finish painting this anyway. So none of the elements have been added to this. She'll have... This, this is stencil. This yes. was a stencil. Love and, the and she used a uh, modeling paste on it. And it'll, we'll add Molding this. Molding paste, I guess. And then tons of more elements. When it's finished, I will get it up so you guys can see and it. And we decided to put little screw eyes underneath the canvas, go into the wood. And that's why she can take some, uh, kind of some old steel rusty wire and wire around the log and, or the limb. And that will hold it on the bottom of that. Cool, isn't it? Okay, any place that that gesso's pulling, I'm going and blending it so it I don't have a big glob of it. I think we're just about covered. Any questions about what I'm doing or how I attach these or? Did anybody make one this week? Or did you just watch? Thanks, Cecile. I know you feel obligated to say that because she's not your thing. Love you. <laughs> did you make one when we did these, Cecile? Because we did this at Art Unplugged. Cecile's the one that reviewed my... Um, soldering demo and she she's my friend but i don't think she's very truthful and she said it was good she got a lot of information and she's been soldering for 10 years i think i have two of her pieces love her stuff okay so we're good here Let's throw this back in Look, I had enough, and I still have some left over, so uh, you don't need any more for your piece, do you? <laughs> okay, we'll set that off to the side, and we'll find something to use that on, because I waste nothing. Uh, 
so. Um, I'm going to put the lid back. I thought I might need to get into this, and I don't, so I'm going to cover this back because I'm notorious for um, spilling, knocking things over. So let me tell you a little bit about these sprays and how they work. Can they see this? Do we need to move the camera? Yeah, I'm going to move it a little bit. Cecile said this wasn't something she made. Were you not here? You had to be here that she year. She was here. Yeah. She didn't, okay. She just didn't make it. Okay. And she is very truthful, and it was a great, great video. Good. She's been soldering for about 15 years. Okay. And it shows. Okay. Over here. Again, guys, these are posted in the comments below our live video oh. today. Here's goes the microphone. Sorry about the bang. They are posted so you can go back and look at the colors in the comments. Okay, these are Lindy sprays. And I don't think they get as much um, media on it, but I absolutely love these sprays. And we, we carry several different brands, but this is a really good one. The notorious thing all sprays will fight is the tips clog on them because they have a little bit of a, they have gum arabic in it. You know what gum arabic is? It's what used to be on the back of postage stamps. It's the material that keeps pigment solidified in watercolor. If you didn't, it would just be powder, and as soon as it dried, it would fall off. So that's gum arabic. So all of these different uh, mica powders and all of this, to make them adhere to your projects, it has to have a powdered gum arabic in it. So that's why these come as a powder. So they ship really lightweight. So that you have the spray bottle, and it's a good quality spray bottle, and there's just a little bit of the powder in the bottom. So what you do is take some warm water. It doesn't have to be warm water. It just mixes easier. And it says, I think it says, yeah, it says fill line right here. So you're just a little bit from the top. So you just put some warm water in there, and I usually let it sit to, I think the instructions even tell you this, but I let it sit just a couple minutes to kind of start you know, breaking down the powder, and then I just, you know, do a pat like you do like nail polish and get it all shook up. And you can see, and I even shook these a few minutes ago, but let me find one that hasn't been shook. Okay, these have been liquefied already. Do you see how there's a line of pigment at the bottom? That, that powder is going to settle out at the bottom. So it's really important before you use them, you really shake them up well and you get all of that powder distributed in there. Even after you've used these once, fill them with water again. It will be much lighter, but until that's clear, keep using it. But these are great bottles to reuse, and they do sell refills. They're not individual, they're in, in little packs, but you can get a pack of refills. Or use any, any pigment powder will work. And now, let me tell you the difference in pigment powders. So, one is called Stardust, and I've kind of put these, sorry, I've put these together in groupings. So like this one has three star bursts and one moon shadow. So if it's called moon shadow, it has a little bit of walnut crystal to it. So it has a little bit of brown. So this is a moon shadow in here. This one's a little moon shadow. You see that little brown color that's coming out here. This one's a moon shadow. So you get the pigment color, but then you get the moon shadow. And then the ones that say starburst on it, after they spray and go on, they have like little bursts of like, like a starburst that comes out of it. And then the other one they have is called glitz. And the glitz is just kind of shimmery. It isn't like a burst, it's just shimmery all over. So um, that's the difference in what you've got. And a couple like this one shows green on the outside. This actually isn't, this one is a silver. So I've put these in groupings that I think work very well together. So um, that's what we've got going on here. Okay, so if you are interested in the kits, the kits that Joni has pulled together are $22 each. That includes all four. Individually, for those of you familiar with the uh, colors and know what you want or need me to go up front and help pick doing a Facebook meet, they run five fifty a each. piece. And we can, so, you can do them So you're separate. saving money getting the kit, but if you want to do some individuals and select because you're wanting to do a bunch of funky colors, um, opposed to staying in a colored palette, I am happy to help you out with that as soon as we get done And today. we do have other brands that will work on this, but like I say, I really like how this happens. Now, one thing I want to tell you, though, 
on the moon shadow, the starburst, the glitz, you don't always see that when it first goes on. As it dries is when you see that separation and that uh, distinction of the starburst or of the walnut crystals coming out. So don't spray and just keep spraying and say, this isn't working, you have to let it dry for that to come out. Okay, I'm gonna hit that hair dryer real quick on this uh, gessoed piece. I use tongue depressors to separate the, uh, the beads here. They're laying on their side. Okay, there's a few spots in there I can still see some wet, but um, we'll go ahead and work on this other one first, and hopefully it'll be dry then. So let me get these all shook. See the bottom it still has some settling on there. I'm right on the microphone doing that. <laughs> Banging right in your ear. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this technique where you just let it run. And we'll do this on... Uh, Sherry's piece here and if these tips don't spray I should have checked them and I didn't there's a little pinhole here you can put a needle in there and you can also take the heads and swish them around in hot water and that will uh, clear that out but let's see if we get spray out of this so I responded yes but I just want to verify you did this so there is a stardust a moon shadow and a glitz in each one. not in each one I did ones that I tried, they, none of them are like solid. There's a combination, most of them have a, a couple star bursts, a glitz, a glitz, one moon shadow, but there's a, a variety. And if there's a certain color grouping you're interested in, we'll be glad to go through and show you those uh, at the end of this a little bit clearer. So you can see I'm just spraying and letting this run. And you get a real nice glow on your skin, too. 
see now see these running this is just dripping see on the side how it's just dripping down and then I'm gonna bring in this one's just a gold so I'm gonna do kind of an over shadowing of gold here bring some gold down um, you won't see this you may not even it may not even be dry during this video um, but it adds a little bit of gold to it then do I have a moon shadow out that's a glitz okay this is a moon shadow so this has some of the brown in it has some brown and some blue so we'll kind of make a stripe through the middle there and I'll let that kind of drip down and then after it's dry if you don't like the color you can come back in and put some more over the top so you can see you can just spray it like that and it works um, works just fine I'm gonna come out here it's got kind of bent up and I'll add a little bit of that out there on the side I'll put a little bit of blue down here so you can kind of see that okay now let's work on the one I just finished then and let me come over here and grab another little paintbrush so I want to be a little more controlled still in in screen so I want to be a little more controlled, so let's go in here on this bird. So I'm just going to put some on here, and I'm going to brush it out. See how easy that is to do? You can do these, so, and this works great just on paper too. And if I didn't want to get any overspray on this, I could have just sprayed this on a piece of plastic and picked it up just like watercolor. My head's probably in your way, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to pick this up and spray down inside there instead of turning on my head. So I'm going to paint all over the birdie. And this one is a um, starburst. So I don't know if you'll get the same amount of starburst that you would normally get just from spraying it since I'm manipulating it and brushing it out. Okay, so there's the bird. Now let's take some green and let's come in here on um, some of the greenery. Let's see where else is greenery down in some of this out and I'll just wear it where it's on the letters I'll just let the two blend together I'm just trying to get the the greenery itself but since this is kind of twigs let's come in here and use some uh, let me grab let me go off to the side here just a second guys let me grab here's a moon shadow so I've got some brown in this one see how it comes out gold as it dries And that's because it has mica in it. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of brown onto this because um, this is like the nesting material. So I'll get it up here on the raised little areas. Pull that from there and bring it over. Really kind of a nice bronzer effect. Yeah, it really is. I don't want a lot of, um, well, I don't know, maybe I do like that. See, I don't want a lot of brown in there, so I can spray it again, but I think I'll kind of tuck underneath these things. Don't you love it how what you have planned when you start doing it kind of takes on its own direction? Okay, so I've got some brown and all the little nest material. I guess I need to bring some up here. 
So I'm going to spray some right there. And I'm going to use that as my palette. And I'm going to pull off and I'm going to come in here around the bird. And that will lighten it down there that way anyway. I guess I can bring these up here on the sticks. And guys, do you have any questions at all? Color questions, how we attach stuff. Okay, I'm going to come in here and do some overspray of a little bit of blue and some green. Get some background in there. Just kind of hit that a little bit. Let that kind of feed down into it. Can I ask, guys, is the video working for everybody else? Two of my deals say it's working fine, but I've got a couple people online say they're having some problems. Okay, I'm going to put some gold down here. Because I want that to stand out a little bit different. come over here and grab me uh, maybe a lavender. I, I'm terrible with colors. I like have to have more and more and more. So Joni, while you're doing some spraying, uh -huh. um, would you explain to him again how you group the Lindsay's, Lindsay's please? Color wise or what they are? If it's a starburst, when it dries, now I'm brushing it, so I'm interrupting that starburst. But if you just spray a starburst like on paper and let it sit, I'll grab a piece of paper. Let me get my hidden stash. Now this is just copy paper. Well, here, here's one that's, um, okay, this is a starburst. So you're going to see a little bit of spits of that come out. This is a glitz, and a glitz just stays kind of shimmery. Like this is glitz on my hand. And glitz you can put over other colors to make them glimmery too. And then this is a moon shadow, and we'll put it here. And you'll see it kind of separate out. And this is a brown moon shadow, so there's it's just some golden brown. So it isn't as... Um, noticeable now this is a moon shadow that's got green and blue in it so we'll put it up at the top there so okay i'm going to actually use it down here on the bottom i'll just let that stay kind of spitted down there spitted is that a word it is now i'll put it in my teacher dictionary. okay that makes it a <laughs> I hear a couple people say it goes in and out, and after I did some checking, it greatly depends on uh, your connectivity. My computer, which is low connectivity on the Wi-Fi, is and kind of goes in and out every once in a while. Via my phone, it's very clear. So unfortunately, it's not something on my end that I can correct for you. If I could, I would. I apologize. I will check in and see what I can do to help you guys out before our next video, should this happen. So I've got some of these, I love browns and blues together, how they interact. So it kind of, it turns to this kind of greeny shade in here. So on this bird, let's do a, um, I want a darker.
I'm gonna let that lay flat like that because I want that to pool and dry in there. I'm gonna just drag it out here under the tail a little bit. That won't settle in. I like this how it's lining up here. Let's get this feather, this feather done so it stands out. I'll put a little bit of green here so we can spread that underneath. And I think I'll go down the side with some green. But usually I don't paint it out. I usually just let it drip and take on its own shape. But since I had several of it done like that, I thought it might be good to show another technique. Okay, I'm going underneath all of those little areas. Lay down a base. And then we can top spray it with another color. Uh -huh. And I know you told me how to seal them. Could you explain that to them real quick? If I was using uh, an element, now this flower, this silk flower, I didn't do anything. Well, this is gesso. This and is see, just my, gesso, but you're leaving gesso. yours colored. Mm -hmm. I would uh, use Grumbacher sealer spray. Grumbacher has a sealer spray, and usually I use the matte, the matte like totally disappears. You don't see it. That's what I use on jewelry so my jewelry doesn't tarnish. And when I use the gloss, I use it because I'm doing tin types and tin types were glossy. That's why I use the gloss. So um, hope that helps. But that's a great, um, a great spray to use. I'm going to darken this up a little bit. Okay, let's see, it's kind of hard to do this upside down, but so I'm going to add a little bit more gold glitz to this kind of medallion piece here. We'll let that set so that'll kind of turn like that. I like the way fly came out though. Um, so I want to bring some more of this brown shading in up here. So I think I'll just do an all over spray. Am I still on screen? Yes. On the top? I'm going to do some brown spray up here as a backdrop, and it will mute the colors I put on top of it. But then I don't have to go back. And if it dries, it's not going to blend as much. So I'll get a, a base of this put down. And let that dry a bit. So I'm going to go down in the little white spots. I mean, I even like the way it spits down in here and it doesn't, it isn't spread out. But since I've done it in the whole other part, I'll, I'll go ahead and mostly spread it out in here. So you guys have projects you're going to do these for as be a great uh, Christmas or a birthday present for somebody and do it in a theme of something that they enjoy. We did a bunch of them as dogs, and we used dog collars, uh, dog biscuits, um, tags. And I posted one of them. Little I rubber did. dogs, little animals. And I'll, I will toys. repost it. Um, I had a couple of people actually want some as memorials for their dogs as well. Cool. So I will make sure that gets reposted, guys. Okay, so I have a pretty good base here. I don't want any stark white since I'm doing all these kind of muted greens and blues. So I'm trying to kind of hide away the extreme white from the gesso. You see how that gesso just really holds in that paint, pulls it in? The lace up here is really absorbent, so I just gave it another little spritzing up on the top. And 
then let's bring some uh, blue down here on this side right here. And I'm just going to let that kind of run there. I guess I need to get some of the brown up in here. I'll bring some of those drips up here to change this color there a bit. What do we have going on the bottom? Okay, we've got a lot of white underneath there. So I think I'll just get some green. This is the this is the moon shadow one though. So I'm gonna have kind of lavender, blue, green, kind of a multicolor. And we'll just spray that and let that set. We're gonna just let that go. Now I'm pretty intense brown up here. So let's bring some um, color up in here. So we did some green over there. Let's bring some blue over here into this side. What's interesting on this uh, folded fan, one side's taking one color, the other side's taking the other color, depending on what direction I'm spraying it at. Oh, that's wet gesso. So I'm kind of having to blend that in so it doesn't dry white. Guys, I disturbed the gesso. Guys, we will show the colors again when Shoni gets done with this. <clears throat> but they are on our Facebook page. They're in the comments. Um, actually, they're in the post right before we went live. That way you can look closer and enlarge them and see what the number is for your order. And this is just gold glitz I'm putting on the top, just kind of to blend them together a little bit. And as it dries, it'll have this shimmer like it's on my hand. So I think I'm pretty much done with that. I'll just kind of peek around, make sure I don't have any white, stark white spots. It can be like a little bit, so it kind of highlights it, but I don't want it to be like super white. So I hope you guys are going to um, do some of these because we've had such reactions to these when we took them to shows and people wanted to do them. Remember, great kid project. They're very, you can be very elegant and very artsy as well, but um, also can be a great kids project. And they love doing, you know, hidden things and where's Waldo, so really good for them. And after this dries, if I think this is too severe brown or something, if I put more on it right now, it's just going to kind of all run and blend together. So I'm going to let this dry. I guess I could zap it really fast. But it, it's, it's going to blow the, the liquid, too. Let's give it a little bit. I've got a couple people asking again. Before you get started, can I show this really fast before it dries? She said before you get started, after I got started. She Sorry. hates me. Salt shaker. Okay, salt shaker. Okay, I'm salting it. Except the salt shaker's stuck. <laughs> I'm hitting the areas that really the stuff's still really wet and it may be too dry. You guys know what, what happens with watercolors when you put salt on it? It pools and gives you like little bliss, uh, bubbles. So, okay, we're back at, at colors. What do we need to tell them color wise? They're just wanting to go over the colors again. Um, like I said, it is in a post, which would unfortunately mean you had to move your live video. You can move it down 
down to your right hand side and still see it and go and see other posts. But we'll go over the colors again for you guys so you can see for those of you wanting to order. Okay, so like this was a pink, pink gold combination. So just the gold glitz like I had used. This, this, these two are, um, this is Stardust and Sparburst. They both kind of, Stardust kind of models in more. You can see from the label, it kind of blurs and Starburst kind of ends up being like little flashes. And then this one's a moon shadow. So a little bit different combinations. They all do different things, but they all blend. Like you don't, wouldn't want to use like a green and a red. You'd end up with brown. So I use colors that blend nicely and like the blue goes into green, goes into brown, and they all kind of turn into um, transitioning colors. But you don't want to use like total opposite colors, like orange and blue, because all of those are going to turn brown. So these are all kind of some uh, blue, or it's a little bit of lavender and green in here, a glitz, a star dust, a star burst, a moon shadow. I just did, mixed them up. These are kind of muted purples and reds and pinks in here shadow this one's a uh, two moon shadows a starburst and a starburst then down here you just have this uh, glitz you have a green this is starburst a yellow star uh, uh, dust and a moon shadow this has some green to it here's another these two are both uh, blue greens this one has a brighter blue this was softer and goes into more of the the, the, the deep um, has more brown to it, so it dulls this out. This is brighter. So you have a really bright green uh, starburst, a glitz, a moon shadow, and a star starburst. And again, guys, notice the numbers. So if you were yeah, wanting- Yeah, seven, eight. There you go. Okay, and so this is number six. So this goes into purples, uh, like light purples, lavenders, and some pinks, and a little bit of green to be a little contrast to it. That's number six. Number five is all pinks and uh, reds. So a red to be like a hot pink. You've got a starburst, a moon shadow, a glitz, and another starburst. We have down here, we have number 12. 12 is yellows, all your warms. Orange, you have a bright, bright orange starburst, kind of mottled a moon shadow with kind of some pink and yellow. A brown starburst and a yellow starburst. That'd be a great combination. And then this is a green, and these are all um, pretty mu pretty muted. Oh, no, I'm sorry, they're grays. I, say, I think these are grays. These are your muted grays. Wouldn't that be great for, like, a Halloween picture where you're wanting to do a, a, a stormy, you know, backdrop or a, a night sky? So you've got a gray uh, glitz. You've got a kind of a whitish glitz. And you've got a starburst that's in silver and a moon shadow that's gray and brown. And then these are browns, so kind of the same thing, but going into the grays, we're coming more into the browns. So a charcoal, a brown, both of those are starburst. The moon shadow brings a little bit of the gray lavender and a starburst in uh, the, the uh, white. And that's number 10. And number nine are all warm metallics. So you have a moon shadow mist that's pretty coppery and a starburst that's orange and a glitz that has a little bit of the yellow tin to it and a starburst that's in the gold as well so those are kind of your metallics in a warm and more your metallics here in a, in a silvery gray and then you got your pinks your greens so like i said if there's a color you really love afterwards we'll be glad to go up front we can either do it through messenger i'll be if you want to text me uh my phone number is 316-640-6332 if you want to text me, I can text you back pictures of things. So um, uh, I guess that's it. Here's our paper that we did. I don't know if this is picking up, but there's a real sheen of gold right here. And we're, they drip like this. Oh, do you guys know how to make these drip on any of your bottles when you're spraying them? So if you want to get a really nice overall, you stand back and you kind of, you know, do that. But that, see how that if you kind of just drop them a little bit and don't push it all the way down you get spits that's how to make your bottle spit so you'll get like little droplets like that on it so all the way back and spritz down hard you get a fine mist dribble them up front like that sometimes I even will take a paper clip and lay it over the top so it hits that and makes it drip down kind of like a dribble glass 
Okay, now on this, I am seeing in here, I'm because I put that gold over the top, I'm seeing a little bit of gold pool up in here. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of blue starburst at the very top. Is this the same one? This, I think, yeah, this is the same one. Let me take the cap off. This is a brighter blue here. I'm going to add a little bit. Yeah, this is more of a teal. And then, so I let that spit, and this is going to kind of absorb. Now I'm going to take a little bit of green, and I'm going to kind of go in a little bit tighter. I think this is about empty, and I'll add a little green in there. I'll add a little green back in there give it just a little variance in there. But I like that teal. That is Delphimian turquoise. Okay. Oh, I just can't stop. <laughs> she never can stop. We'll give it a little bit. We'll bring this in here a little bit. See how when it's dry, you can paint? and it just doesn't run, you can add a little bit of that to it. Oh, well, let's put some down here. Guys, I'm gonna give you a couple reminders while she just can't stop. Our next class coming up is the ear wire class, and please look for the notice coming out on Facebook. We will be posting our finished product for you to look at. The pictures of the groupings of Lindy's are on our post prior to us starting the Facebook Live. If you want some specific colors that we don't offer in these sets, please call Tony, call the store, message me. You and I can go live via Facebook meeting and pick out the colors that you want. Also remember the soldering class is now up for sale for $75. I will get the advertisement up on the page for that for you later today. And the first 20 people to purchase it will be put in a drawing for a kit of supplies that are fabulous and valued at $80. So you definitely want to get in on that. Almost, you're over doubling your, your money there. That's why Jody has to show you what they are. It's really, really nice set. And the picture of them will also be online. A lot of people don't bother getting the salami block you have to have it and there's going to be a whole bunch of glass there's twenty dollars worth of glass a fid people don't know about fids you need a fid your cleaning rag you have to have this too these are things that people just avoid getting because they don't think they have to have them but you do this is the finishing compound and then this is the queen jewel this is we make these it's kind of called a soldering rail you can't do great work without this, trust me. And there is a trailer up there that shows that on, online yes. on how that is used. So, um, and, we will be sharing the and they're $35. We will be sharing the trailer on Facebook as well, so you can look through that. Um, we'll be sharing the trailer on Facebook as well, so you can look through that. Also, guys, please remember to go in and like our Instagram. We're going to start going live on Instagram as well. And like our YouTube because all of the videos that we do live, our trailers, some extra little things that Joni, me, Farron, any of us might do that we videotape, we put up there so you guys can go back and reference it. So you want to make sure that you're a part of those things as well. Before we go, does anyone have questions or anything you need help with? Anything you need to see again? Let's give you a couple minutes to get that in place while Joni still can't quit. Sorry. <laughs> I had to add some of that deep teal in there. And I like this, this little spits of color out here on the end. Who knows, I may even add more to it as the day goes. I don't want it to all be one color, so I'm trying to be careful and not just, you know, brush everything. Yeah.
Facebook.